Hey, coming to you live from the beautiful Sunshine Coast and Powell River, which is situated on the traditional lands of the Pahama Nation. I will be your host, Maureen Reed, and I am an astrologer. Welcome to you, the listener, and to Jill. Hello. Hello. Yay. <laughs> we might be getting it. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I do have a brief uh, community announcement that I would like to make. Uh, this is on behalf of the grads of the class of 2021. They um, have invited you to please line the streets of Powell River for their grand parade, which is on June the 26th. And it starts at 5 p.m. from the Beach Gardens and ends, of course, at Brick School. And I am sure that the actual map of the twists and turns and the roads that they will be on will be up on the school website. Anyway, um, they've had quite the year to graduate, um, and we do congratulate them on their success. Yes. So, speaking of schools, um, we are going to this week uh, sort of follow from. Uh, the topic of last week, which is uh, mundane astrology, which is the study of charts of countries. Um, and we're going to look at uh, the big news that's been in the Canadian um, uh, scene. Well, actually, there are two of them, and one of them is just beyond the pale with the gentleman or person or whatever however you want to name this individual that drove over the Muslim family, which is, again, horrendous. Um, but we're going to look at, uh, specifically this week, to see what sort of astrological signatures can follow through history when it comes to something as problematic and as insane as cultural genocide, which is kind of what the white European people with their colonialism set loose upon the planet and you know now all the chickens are coming to roost which is yeah okay so um is this a just a pluto dynamic are other planets involved can we actually see them bouncing off of the canadian chart um yeah, so I, you know, I did a very simple Google search, which I'm sure if I had done it, I don't know, 20 years ago, there would have been nothing, nada. But now there is several sites, um, and I don't know how many, but I picked one that gave a reasonably succinct listing of um, the whole, well, not the whole, but, you know, an outline of what has happened down through the years uh, with residential schools. And, of course, at this point in time, um, you know, why did it, why did this next piece come out now? And is there a sort of a, a reoccurring signature? And, oh, some of the charts are just a bit mind-bending. Um, and so what I'm going to do, and um, Jill will chime in with her take on the various charts, if you go to the website, cardinalastrology.ca, um, you will find a whole bunch of charts. And I'm just literally going to go through them in order. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a preamble because the whole idea of uh, colonialism vis-a-vis um, -vis natives in North America. That started long before Canada was even conceived. Yeah, it would be interesting also to look at countries like Australia and, and the yeah. US. And whether there's similar signatures. That, That's yeah. true. That's true. Because, because I, you know, we're not certainly we're not, not alone. No, no. Any any country where the Europeans decided to go in and oh, <laughs> has, you know, really damaged the the cultural yeah, the, the original culture. The you know, and then, of course, there's also that whole, how do you identify, like, especially in places like Europe, how do you ever identify first people, really? Anyway, it's, human history is, we're, we're not exactly a peaceful species. Well, and, and also, the colonizers are the ones who wrote the history. Well, exactly. It's always the well, ones who the win. That, that we have are our records, not yes. People who yeah. were actually affected by what we did. Yeah, did you 
Um, it was interesting, actually, on the CDC site, which, you know, CDC is sort of struggling to uphold its own standards, but I was familiar with some time in the day. But anyway, they listed 42 novels that have been first-hand accounts that have been written and published. Um, yeah, so, you know, they, the natives themselves are telling us our story, and it behooves us to read and listen. Mm -hmm. The least we can do is to do it's it. Not anyway. It's not ancient history. No, it isn't. It isn't. And yeah, the, the effects of it is, are still with us today. OK, so we've already sort of identified that Uranus and Taurus, this idea of ground radar, that's where it fits. And with the Pluto dynamic uh, going through Capricorn since 2008, um, it's uh, shaking up sort of the institutionalized power structure um, and forcing, as you so eloquently put last week, uh, contending with unresolved darkness or transgressions from the past. If one truly, and this is the hope, of course, confronts and resolves those issues, the effect can indeed be transformative. If not, though, those unresolved issues can consume and destroy from within. And one can only sort of pause here and think of a few countries that are not exactly getting it. And no, they, no, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and overall, we're not yet, but it's starting to, I think people are starting to wake up to these things. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's a good thing. And I think this Plutonian stuff is bringing all the. Yeah. All the, stuff around yeah. institutions and structures that we actually the institutionalized don't question or and it's it's not even we forget that we should question um, oh absolutely yeah because yeah. it's all about control i mean that yeah. the other aspect of that pluto in capricorn is they're trying very hard to control yeah and yeah. keep and keep because Capricorn yeah. doesn't like change. Capricorn wants things to stay the same. Yeah, so they like it. It's working for them. <laughs> Pluto's struggling to help them hang on by their fingernails, but at the same time, all this stuff is is yeah, it just keeps coming up because it's yeah. time. Because it's time, and Pluto won't. Pluto's the cosmic purgative, as far as I'm concerned. It yes yeah. purges yeah. it. Yeah, it's like this is this is causing actual disease, really. You know, it's yeah. like something in your body where it's poison, it has to come out or it's going to kill you, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the chart, uh, the charts that we're going to look at, we are going to, I mean, I pulled these dates from uh, a website uh, and the chart we're going to bounce them off of will be the Canadian chart. So I didn't start the charts until Canada actually became, well, there's one chart. Um, the year that uh, Canada became a country, uh, which in and of itself is saying colonialism and is a transgression. So, you know, my first graphic that I put up is a map of North America, which shows, I think, just the dominant tribal groupings. Um, anyway, you know, like this was an inhabited, functioning in human terms. Place, right? And, and the border didn't end, you know. No, it did not end at the 40th US, parallel. Right? You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's North yeah. America. Yeah. Okay, so um, I am, for those who are on a video, I am going to share. I think the screen. No, no, hopefully. Wait a minute. Okay, pause, there's a pause. And go to, okay, this is ugly good air. I, I apologize to all those who are just listening. But if you go to my uh, website, okay, you too can follow along with what we have up on the YouTube video. Oh, there it is. Okay, so the first graphic that I have up is that map that I was talking about. Okay, so this is kind of the brief beginning history. So mostly residential schools were established by Christian churches and then the federal government. And of course, prior to us becoming a country, this would have been Great Britain. Um, and the, you know, sort of overarching idea was to assimilate 
um, indigenous children into the Euro Canadian society. Like, do you know what we're doing? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so back when, you know, this first really in earnest began, apparently is in, uh, you know, the mid 1600s, around 1620. And at that time, Taurus, Pluto was in Taurus. And of course, we know because of the egg shape of its orbit that um, it stays in Taurus a long time because it was still in Taurus by the time, um, that doesn't make sense. Must have done one complete lap by the 1600s. Yeah, it is. Um, Uranus was in Cancer back then. Neptune was in Libra. So by 1831, the first, so this would have been under the auspices of probably just the church itself and with the blessings, no doubt, of Great Britain. So the Mohawk Institute begins, um, and it is in 1831. So by that time, Pluto was in Aries. Neptune was in Capricorn. And Joe, I think you yeah. Is there a graphic for that? Is there a graphic for that? No, no. Oh. I didn't start until, yeah. Okay. And I think we can assume that with Neptune and Capricorn, that, you know, this high ideal of, you know, we're civilized and you aren't, and yeah, Neptune can be quite distorting. Well, Neptune, Neptune also has themes of, of like victim persecutor kind of. Yes, that's true. Dynamic, that's true. Well. So I think that's part of it too. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, sacrifice as well. Yes. Okay. So that institution was run by the Anglican Church. So it is literally the very first one. Okay, it was in Brantford, Ontario. Um, and yeah, it is considered to be the very first one. Okay. So again, prior to the founding of Canada, the Bagot Commission from 1842 to 1844 is presented to the Legislative Assembly, which was, I'm assuming, you know, whatever it was before we became Canada. Um, it proposes, and listen to this, separating indigenous children from their parents is the best way to assimilate them into Euro-Canadian culture. It's just, you know, you hear that. And guess what they want to call them? They want to call them industrial schools. Uh-huh. Mind-boggling. Just, you know, the, the, the hubris, again, the hubris that yeah, we have the way that you can write and you go. Also fitting with, uh, I know Cap Capricorn is not involved there particularly, but it's fitting with that idea of Pluto and Capricorn right now, because it's all about yeah. industry. Industry, yes. Industrialization yeah. of the world. Yeah. And so at that point, in, the, in 1845, Pluto is at 22 degrees of Aries. Uranus is also in Aries. Um, Saturn and Neptune are in Aquarius. Oh. So that time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so 10 years before we become uh, a country, the Gradual Civilization Act. Like, these words are just mind boggling. Yeah, they okay, are. So this requires male status Indians. <clears throat> excuse me, and Métis, the age of 21, to read, write, and speak either English or French, um, and to choose a government-approved surname. Um, it awards 50 acres of land to any sufficiently advanced Indigenous male, um, and re in return removes any tribal affiliations or treaty rights. Right, you know, so like all of those contracts that the Indians thought they were agreeing to, you know, let's just, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do any of that. Yeah. Okay, so the year that we become a country, just before it becomes official under the Constitution Act, British North American Act, the federal government takes authority over the First Nations, so this would have been from the Crown, and land reserved for First Nations. The authority would later uh, extend that to education of status Indians. And then, of course, we come into the picture. Now, I have a chart for that last one. Let's bring it up. There we go. So 
that is the chart. So what's up on the screen right now is the Canada chart. And for those that are listening, we have very interesting charts. We have Neptune on an ascendant and it's Aries. So Neptune and Aries on the ascendant. We have Pluto at 15 degrees of Taurus in the second house. We have Venus and the moon, which is void, of course. I don't know how that plays out in a mundane part. Wow. Um, at, uh, in Gemini, Venus is at 15, the moon's at 28. Uh, we have an exact conjunction between Uranus and the sun in Cancer on the IC, like they're just like all right there. Uh, we then have Mercury and Leo in the fifth, and we have Mars in Virgo in the sixth. We also have Saturn in Scorpio in the eighth. Our midheaven, of course, is that same eight degrees of Capricorn. We have uh, Jupiter in Pisces, along with the nodal axis, the south node, and that's in the 12th house, and Chiron, uh, which is at 26 degrees of Pisces in the 12th. So that's Where, the back square the moon. What's that? Square, in square the moon, yes, yeah. The other thing I was just noticing with Mercury in Leo in the fifth, um, fifth house of children. Yes. Right, and and the the Leo part is like the royalty and the thinking we are above. We are, yes, yeah, you know, yeah. We need it's to control. Our story. We need to control what these children think, basically. Yeah, yeah. well, we, and it's our story. Your story. We have, to, we have divine right because that's kind of what that. Yeah, yeah. The royal thinking is right. <laughs> that is true. Mm. Okay, so here's that federal responsibility chart. And uh, okay, so let me get to what I put here. Okay, so uh, it puts that Mars from the Canadian chart up there in the 10th. And so Virgo is about um, who are you going to take care of, sixth house, Mars. I think we have to, we have to re remember that we don't have accurate times for these. That's true. That's true. So thank I, you. Thank you. We yeah. need to not focus on the houses but the planet that's, that's, that's right. hard to do so right. <laughs> that's so hard for us to do when we're trained to look at, at yes. house position the nodes are there and mars is there okay so that's expanding service slavery virgo these are just all virgo things um we have what else do we have um okay we have mars and Mercury are sextiling, uh, no, Uranus is sextiling both Mercury and Mars at four degrees of Cancer. Uh, so it's, you know, obviously it's coming up to where it will be in um, the uh, founding chart of Canada. But what's really interesting is we've got some Neptune. Okay, conjunct. So we buy this, you know. We're the pioneers. I mean, Aries, that's another classic sign of kind of being the first about something. And so putting Sun Neptune in conjunction um, close to what would will become our ascendant. Well, yeah, it puts yeah. it in Canada's 12th house. So that's yeah. it's it again, it's our kind of our dirty little secret. It's yeah. It's yeah. our we've got this illusion that we're trying to put across that we're good guys, but yeah, this is not. This is point. I mean, Neptune is also kind of toxins and poisons as well. Yes. Yep. It is toxic stuff, which is yeah, why it is. It which is, is why it needs to be purged. So you yeah. know, I think that that twelfth house position for that is interesting. And we think it's benevolent. We've got Venus Jupiter conjunct trining the the Canadian chart's moon. Well, yeah, I mean, there's yeah, this, we we don't think we're doing anything wrong. Well, yeah. well, there's this misguided perception that it's somehow spiritual to do. I mean, church is supposed to be about spiritual stuff, right? But it it's not. This isn't yeah anything yeah. to do with that. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so we become a country, and one of the first things we do um, is the Indian Act. Okay, which I know the indigenous people of this country have been fighting with 
sensor thing as we're doing. Okay, so with this chart, uh, Uranus figures very prominently. And what I find very disconcerting is uh, Uranus in this chart. So this was 1876, so it would be in a country for about 10 years before they formalized this act. Um, and so Uranus had moved on from Cancer, it was now in Leo, and it's squaring our Saturn Pluto uh -huh. opposition, right? And it's a repeat of what's going down right now. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, like uh, it would be opposite where Saturn is right now and squaring itself in Taurus. Yeah. 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 Which is just, I mean, this is just so bizarre. Um, yeah. yeah, and what else did I note? Okay. And, and right now it's approaching that Pluto in Taurus. Yes, yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. So yes. Mercury um, is um, is trining that Jupiter, you know, so again, there's this, um, you know, kingly right to decide. Um, mm -hmm. And Saturn is opposite our Mars. Right. Yeah. So, and in Pisces, Saturn is not operating at its best at all. Um, but that's the two malefics in opposition to each other. And um, yeah, not a good, not a good thing. Well, I also it was in this chart. You've got that very dramatic T square. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You've got. Jupiter and the moon, well, yeah. the moon would be within a few degrees of that at least, depending yeah. on the time, but they're all squaring Saturn. Yes. So, yeah. And opposite Venus, Mars. Yeah. Yeah. And that hits the, the Canada's uh, Jupiter Mars opposition. Yes, it does. Exactly. In the mutable signs. Yeah. I swear. So it's. And the yeah. other thing is, of course, with what's coming out this year, this is where, and we just passed our second eclipse, and so we won't be eclipsing now until the winter. Yay. <laughs> but it is in that same Gemini Sagittarius axis right now. Mm. Yeah. And the next, the next eclipse is also very close to the last of the Saturn. Uranus squares, so just yes. as one was. So, yeah, it's interesting how that's falling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More excitement to come. For the universe has an interesting sense of timing, I must say. It, it does. Okay, so let me see now where we here. So, that was the Indian app. Okay, so I've got a few little things to talk about here that I didn't do chart for. So, residential schools are authorized. Uh, based on recommendations from a Gavin report. So John A. McDonald authorizes the creation of residential school system. And mm -hmm. this is specifically what it was designed to do, to isolate indigenous children from their families and cut all ties to their culture. I mean, we even admit it that that's what we're, cultural genocide is what we're about. <laughs> this makes your skin kind of want to see. And we've got the Uranus um, opposition to the Canadian Uranus there. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, yes, yeah, in this residential school. Up course. there yeah. in our tent house, and it's up opposing that Sun Uranus in the fourth in the Canada chart. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. exactly. Yeah. This is quite a chart, actually. It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the amendments are made to the uh, Indian Act. Um, or, and so this is the chart, I believe, this is, I got there, yeah, now this is the November chart, which is, that's health at the residential yeah. school, yeah, health at the residential school, okay, mm -hmm. um, blah, blah, blah. so we partnered with uh, Roman Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, Presbyterian, and the United Church. So although, you know, the news right now seems to just only want to focus on, um, uh, you know, the Catholic Church, but there were other denominations, Christian denominations involved in this insanity. Well, we've also got a square to that, our Canada's Saturn-Pluto again with that Mars-Chiron opposite Jupiter. 
Yes, exactly. But you're talking, exactly. About, talking about health, which is Chiron. Well, yeah. Chiron is wounding and healing. Yeah. And it's opposite Jupiter, but it's and, yeah. and the, and the key like, thing we're, we're gonna we're gonna, you know, say you're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's squaring the sun, which is on top of Saturn. You know, we are the authority. You know, yeah. This is the tie-in with this chart. Okay, so in the moon Saturn, that is um, squaring our, uh, or is on our nodal axis, right, um, of the Canadian chart, because the Canadian chart is uh, 17 Virgo Pisces, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, this, this wheel from home to root. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... Definitely. You know, and, and you'd think, you know, I mean, because all these planets just keep moving, right? And so why would these specific dates just wire in? Well, again, um, Saturn, Saturn, Pluto in the natal, Canada's natal charter yeah. up. And here they are squaring each other. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And priming Mars. You know, that Mars, Mercury, or Mars, um, Chiron is priming that Pluto. Yeah, you know, if you're not careful, you will wound. You will wound. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So the next chart that I put up is when I guess there were obviously indigenous tribes that said, you know, no way, no how. And I have heard stories of the things that they would do to, you know, avoid having their children ripped away. Um, yeah. As any parent would. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so this is the chart for April 1st. Okay, so uh, this is Deputy Superintendent of Indian Affairs, Duncan Campbell Scott. Um, wow. Makes attendance at residential school mandatory for every First Nations child between 7 and 16, and we know they grabbed them even younger. So in this chart, we have Saturn is conjunct on Mars in uh, the Canadian chart. Uh, we have the Jupiter-Neptune, look at that, Jupiter-Neptune um, is... Uh, Dr. Mercury. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but we've also got the nodes on that Saturn-Pluto again. Exactly, yeah, the nodes are there. Um, and we've got the sun, because this went down in April, we have the sun squaring our, our original sun Uranus, and Chiron for that matter. Yeah. Mm. And then Venus Mercury is priming our Saturn in Scorpio, and also on the axis of our north south node. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Uranus is yeah opposite that Saturn, and yeah, and so that's squaring our uh, our opposing our Mars. Yeah, yeah, In exactly. Yeah, yeah, igniting that Mars. Yeah. Okay, so then we go on to oh, this is this is just an absolutely bizarre chart. Uh, so for those uh, out there listening or watching the, the YouTube video, this is a chart worth studying. Um, and <clears throat> I know one of the things I'm, I'm hoping to do this week is to actually comb some of the databases um, and looking for any individuals that might actually be carrying a signature. Um, mm. Because this is a bit of a mind-boggling chart. And relative to our chart, Oh, okay, so here's what goes behind this chart. So apparently, there is a um, story of a national crime published on the 1st of January in 1922. Dr. Peter Henderson Bryce publishes the story of a national crime exposing the Canadian government's suppression of information on the health of Indigenous peoples. Bryce argues that Duncan Campbell Scott and the Ministry of Indian Affairs neglected Indigenous health needs and notes a criminal disregard for treaty privileges. 
and you look at this chart. So as we were saying earlier, Pluto is the one that's going to uncover the poison. And guess where it is? It's exactly conjunct our sun Uranus in Cancer. This, this chart is just kind of well, mind boggling. Yeah, and, and, and it's squaring Chiron Saturn. So all of those are aspecting that sun Uranus. Exactly. It's just... Chiron and the nodes, I mean, Chiron yeah. south node, Saturn north node, yeah. and, and, and the sun itself is opposing our. Yeah, and Neptune is also squaring our Saturn Pluto natally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like this chart is like jumping up and down, demanding us to look at what the heck are we doing? And this well, is way really uh, back in the 19, 1922. Yeah, and the moon opposite is within range yeah. of space that day in, yeah. of opposition to Neptune. So that's that's also, you know, that's yeah. the that Saturn yeah. axis. So yes, it's it's hitting hitting pretty much everything in. Okay. And you've got you've got Uranus opposing our Canada's Mars. Yeah. Yes, so, exactly. You know, yeah. so like this like, is yeah. Yeah. It's, Kind of hitting all the all the yeah. hot spots in this. All the hot spots, yeah. and yet obviously the Canadian public and the press didn't follow it any further, and it just all you know went quietly away. Buried again. Yeah, buried again. Yeah, yeah. That that seems to be how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Which is yeah, sad. Okay. Surprising so, that it got published at all, actually. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure that, well, I don't know. I, you know, a person could delve a little further into the gentleman who wrote it. And, well, and I think me media also wasn't, you know, it wasn't as controlled then by yeah. the certain people that control it. <laughs> I mean, it's become very concentrated, the control yeah. of all media. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't back then. You had independent news newspapers. People yeah. would publish stuff because. And they wouldn't have had. Like this may have only come out in an Ottawa paper. The, the, what I'm quoting here doesn't um, give references to it. And so on. Yeah, and that 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 uh, nodal axis and Jupiter hitting our ascendant too. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, I know. It's just it's jumping and screaming and saying, "Look, look, look what you're doing! It's wrong!" Yeah. And we just go, eh, eh, "Whatever." Well, but you know, back then, that's still quite a long time ago. There were still a lot. I mean, residential schools were still in full swing until oh, for they were totally a very different. long time after that. And yeah. a lot of people believed that you know it was the, actually a good thing. The the stories we were told that these were heathens and savages, and we were the you know yeah. civilizing them and doing them a big favor. So you know, I mean, yeah. people yeah. people believed that stuff. Because they were told they, do. They, do. <laughs> they were taught it in school, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I you know, I think for you and I, it wasn't even a thing. Indians weren't even talked about in history. No, and if it was other it, than the, the Louis uh, Louis Real Rebellion, that was about it. Well, I think we got all these stories about the brave uh, explorers that yes. came over and, yeah, and, like and like they, they found the mountain. No. Been people and, uh, that mountain for centuries. But essentially, you know, uh, the, the, yeah, and yeah. We, weren't, we weren't told about this, the residential schools per se, but they, the native people were not portrayed as, you know, civilized. No, no. To, to, you know, those of us who had that education, it was, you know, yeah. easy to convince us that we were doing them a favor. Yeah. So by the 1930s, there are more than 80 institutions that are connected with the federal government, but that doesn't mean there weren't other scenarios run by, you know, the churches and stuff that weren't part of that. Um, and the enrollment was increasing to upwards of 17,000. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so and eventually they expanded it up into the Northwest Territories. Um, and included the Métis population as well. Um, okay, so 
you and know. Saturn, Saturn is is um, opposing that Neptune. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. trying once again to control the narrative, I guess. Yes, exactly. And of course, then in the 60s, we had the, the 60s scoop, which was not so much about the residential schools, but we're just, you know, if a family was in trouble, and of course, by this point in time, you know, we've, we've trashed their sense of self-esteem, their, their ability to function as healthy human beings. Their society, their culture, their Yeah, like we, we, we have they, they succeeded. Took away and of their course, language. Yeah, uh, we've taken their language away, we've taken their sense of identity away. And so, yeah, it's easy to just walk in and go, oh, you can't raise this kid, let's adopt it out. Right, so yeah. and that's what the whole 60s speech is about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Uranus is stirring that up right now. By yeah. Stirring that. yeah, exactly. Okay, residential school system expands into the north in the 50s. Um, you know, and so there's schools opened up in Inuvik in the Northwest Territories. Um, and then things start to come out. We have uh, when Jax died, so this is the kid that runs away. Um, uh, escapes from the Cecil Jeffrey Residential School near Shoal Lake, Ontario. So there's a little flag starts to come up. And of course, now there's been a movie and books written about this. Um, so a coroner's inquest into his death is held, which I'm sure he was the first child to have an inquest, you know, considering how many other children had already died. Um, but of course, it's an all white jury finds that the residential schools caused the Mendo's. Um, okay, oh no, I haven't read this before. Okay, so the all white jury finds that residential schools caused tremendous emotional and psychological problems. They recommend that a study be made of the present Indian education and philosophy. Is it right? Well, yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Okay, so um, all of the remaining residential uh, schools in 1969 are turned over to the government, even the ones that were just run by um, the churches. Okay, and okay, so by 1979, this, this just keeps boggling me. Um, there are only 28, but there are still 28 schools running uh -huh. in Canada. Yeah. Phil Fontaine, yay Phil, um, who spoke publicly about what abuses he suffered at the Alexander Residential School, calls for a public inquiry. So this is in 1991. Uh, so there is, there's the Royal Commission on Aboriginal uh, Peoples is initiated, and this is in the wake of the OCA crisis. So thank you, OCA, for you know, sort of, you know, starting to turn the tide. Okay. So our last school, last uh, federally operated residential school, and that doesn't mean that there weren't private ones or one run by teachers, although in theory, they've all been taken over by the government. Anyway, the last one closes in 1996, which is just yeah. hard to believe. And so by this point, we have that huge pileup in Capricorn, which is, of course, opposite our son Uranus. Um, and Capricorn is the 10th house of uh, the Canadian park. Yeah. Um, we have Saturn, uh, which is occupying the nodal axis in the Canadian chart in this one. Yeah. Got Chiron um, opposite Neptune, opposite the Canadian Neptune. Yep. Uh, yeah. on the descending. Yeah. Um, also, where you've got Mars, Neptune, Uranus, and Mercury at the end of Capricorn is where yes. Pluto is going back and forth over of course, that. right now. Yeah, exactly. And and Saturn went over it last year with Jan Jupiter and yeah. 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 A lot going on with that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so the summary report from the Truth and Reconciliation is the next chart that I put together. 
Um, okay, so here, this was in 2015. So this is, you know, kind of the latest one I did. We've got Uranus, conjunct our ascendant. Uh, we have um, Mercury, Sun, Mars, conjunct our Venus in our natal chart. We have Jupiter squaring our Saturn Pluto opposition. Uh, we have, um, uh, okay, we have Saturn on the exact degree that Pluto was when the last school closed. And again, that's that, that sad Jupiter or sad um, Gemini axis that the um, eclipse has just triggered. And we've got Neptune climbing. Um, yeah, so the, and that's problematic, I think, having Neptune climbing our original Sun Uranus, because I think everybody in Canada, well, not everybody, hopefully, but I think a lot of people felt, oh, we're done now. No, we're yeah, just yeah. beginning. Well, you know? it's like the illusion that we're doing something. Yes. And I think that Jupiter squaring that Saturn uh, Pluto is yeah. also, this is supposed to give you hope that we are doing something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> all smoke and mirrors. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And Saturn's up there kind of squaring Mars, right? Yes. Yes, it would be. So that's all exactly. Smoke. And and Neptune would be opposite that Mars. Yeah. So right? that's, that Mars is at six. Yeah. Mercury squared. Yeah. So we've got quite a pile up on, on that Mars in our yeah. natal chart. So I'm I'm hoping by this point in the presentation that people are seeing that. Uh, these are not random moments, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're, it's, and this is one of the mind boggling pieces of astrology is that they do, they do have a, a, a logic to them and um, synchronicity to them. Yeah, that's just. Oh, yeah, and, and really, yeah. as with the natal chart, when you have, you have your planets where they are natally, and yeah. when you have trans, the reason we can look at a natal chart with transits and progressions and, and say, well, you got this coming up is yeah. because these do trigger what's in the natal chart. Like the yeah. potential yeah. is there in the natal chart and the transits, which is what these are. Yeah, um, that's what we're looking at here. There are moments in time that we've, that are selected by what we call events. Um, yeah. And of course, we're picking out certain ones. There's always events happening, but but the ones we're looking at, you look at them in relation to the chart, and they they are definitely yeah. like, yeah, this is bringing stuff up from this natal picture. It's just it yeah, just exactly. because, exactly. because it needs to, you know, and yeah. I that's always key. Yeah, and and so would it always imply let's say for instance uh in these cases you know that it's going to be something negative that has to be brought up no, no. the the original promise doesn't have a positive or negative attached to it it's what we put you know it's how we evolve that and we that tend into. to notice the more negative or traumatic events you know because well, yeah. i mean obviously we have if we have a particularly joyous moment we'll remember that and that will be reflected as well yeah. but often we tend to remember more the, <laughs> the things <laughs> we've struggled one. the things yeah. we've had to struggle with and yeah. you know work hard at or whatever yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I think the next chart I have up, right, okay, so in recent time, so this is the chart, because um, there is a chart, which I was kind of surprised that I could go to, but of course with, you know, what's been going on in the last 10 or 15 years, um, all of these issues are being pushed to the fore, people are doing the research, so, the Kamloops scenario, which is not alone in terms of, I'm sure, finding, um, you know, graves of children that died at the school. But this one, okay, and it was literally called, this just blows my mind, it Kamloops Industrial School, and it opened May the 19th in 1890. 
That was a Monday, if anybody's wondering. And this was its original chart. So what I find very fascinating, I did set it for midnight, so we can't really go by the houses. No. But we can look at the fact that Mars is opposite the moon, Neptune, Pluto, Mercury, Venus, and the nodes. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. This one might have been a particularly violent school with my kind of take on this. And we also, of course, have um, what is that? It's almost a square to Saturn, but not quite. Yeah. Oh, no, it is. That's Taurus. Yeah. So Saturn squares the sun in this. Uh -huh. Okay. So now the next chart is, and we can't really do this from the Canadian or I think even the BC chart just because, yeah, but because it's well, and and because that, that school is in BC, it's yeah, we do we it's do interesting for those, to look at the aspects to the BC chart. Yes, we can, we can. Because I did put that one up. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided on a midnight chart for it. So this was the day of the announcement. Okay, so what I want you to know is actually I've got both charts up at the same time, which will make it easier. Okay, so we have when the news came out, look at this. We have that Gemini Sag axis. In the original chart, Gemini Sag axis. Yeah, Mercury is yeah. the closest thing to that. Like yeah. it's closest to the Mercury in the in the in the uh found original, opening of the chart. Yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah, and the nodes are yeah exactly. close are are on the Mercury right so yeah and they're reversed right yeah so yeah what was suppressed is now out yeah the information the data literally the data in this announcement yeah so yeah I just. Eclipses, you know, it's funny back in the day when I used to, you know, do this full time, I actually did not work with you know, the eclipses. And I'm, I'm kind of sad that I didn't because they do have, as I am more to experience in this past week, <laughs> that eclipses actually do have impact, you know. They and indeed. I mean, and they, new and full moons have a certain amount of intensity to them but oh yeah but the energy of an eclipse wraps it up significantly yeah, it does ramp it up very significantly and then of course you've got this mercury neptune square <laughs> which is not helping anything yeah okay so let's just quickly look at so this is those two charts together so the moon is conjunct the south node. I have the announcement on the outside and the original chart on the inside. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for, 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 I think I said it for 9 a.m. as being the time probably when. Oh, Mars Chiron, eh? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Mars Chiron. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so the. BC chart is here. Right. Uh, yeah, so let's just spend a, a, a moment or two with this chart, which I, you know, the first thing that Jill says is look, we've got Uranus conjunct the sun, just like in the Canadian chart. Yep. Which is very interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, you know, do, 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 <laughs> Pluto in. Uh, on the ascendant. Now, of course, for those of us who, um, and I've heard other astrologers say this, not just myself, um, that with Uranus cruising through Taurus, that the likelihood of major earthquakes happening um, is definitely part of that signature. So, of course, <laughs> makes you wonder. Um, I'll probably we'll probably talk about it on this show as Uranus starts to creep ever closer to our ascendant. Huh. Yeah. Well, and then yeah, it gets to the sextile to our IC, our fourth house test, which is at 25 Cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, 
the the Pluto on, on the ascendant to me is like the 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 wealth of the natural resources, resources. Yes. In, yes in BC. That's yeah. that's kind of why we were valuable to Canada, right? Yeah. And 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 how we still predominantly think of ourselves in that way. Um, mm -hmm. you know, as we try to cut down the last old growth tree and yeah. yeah. Well, we've got that that uh, nodal axis in cancer north node on the canadian mm -hmm. sun yeah and jupiter as well and 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 saturn at the south node opposite mm -hmm. so that's interesting it is interesting <laughs> yeah so the moon is people okay the sun is government um and we've had some pretty exciting governments in in this province, as we have, I guess, federally, because we have Sun Yuan of federally as well. Uh, but the moon is in Leo, so big stories, big stories about ourselves. I guess that's the lumberjack. And it trines Neptune. I just saw that. Yes, it trines Neptune. Yeah, we, we might see our horn. We might not be getting the whole story. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Neptune in the 12th house. Yeah. And you've got Chiron opposite Mars, and Mars again in the sixth. Yep. We have uh, in the Canadian chart. Yeah. 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 No, lots of connections to the mother chart. I mean, Canada. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Overseeing body for this province. So. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Huh. But but that T that T square of Jupiter. Uh, your Saturn was Chiron too. Is yeah. Again, it's twelfth house Chiron. So yeah, yeah. That which is not obvious. Well, and, and I think I think it's you know is, I mean Chiron is our deepest wounds, and they're hidden. Yeah. From. And and they're also the twelfth house is also associated with self undoing, and so the fact that you know we basically rape and pillage. The land and the ocean, and, you know, and now there's two fish left and one tree. Uh, yeah, that's going to come home to roost. Well, squaring Jupiter down in the third, we thought we yeah. could, you know, just keep going on and all. on and on. Or yeah. is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there you have it. We are going to transition to something a little lighter next week. <laughs> I think we've done two back to back kind of grim Plutonian moments. Yeah. So yeah. We're, yeah. yeah. we're going to introduce um, sort of classic modern techniques of solar arc directions. We're going to start with those because they're the simplest. We're also going to do, in doing that, we're going to give a mini lesson on ephemeris, which for both Gil and I, it's like, yeah. <laughs> But because modern day astrology students don't have to try to learn how to calculate, because if they don't have their own software, there's tons of software out there. Um, there are times when it's then in, when having ephemerides is, is really a good thing because you now you've got the chart, you can flip through really quickly and, and see where things are going, you know. Yeah. As yeah. it's pulling up chart after chart after chart and getting all confused. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You no, know, it's it you can then just scan and you know yeah. see what's what's there. And yeah. I I all my mine are all very tattered because they yeah. get off. Yeah. And it's interesting, like on uh Chris Brennan's podcast, uh uh with both, you know, he does this monthly get together with um Austin Coffee and um Oh, and then they just ran out the window on me. Anyway, I mean, they they've all held up their ephemeris from oh, yeah. time to time, right? You know, and they are. They're just like they're barely hanging together. Mine are held together with lots of tape. Tape. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Maybe better binding than they do, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we will take you on a little journey through doing solar arcs. Um, and then we might have time to briefly explain because uh, secondary progressions do require calculations. 
Um, and again, you know, software will do that for yeah. you. Um, and I know for myself, um, to me, that particular system is just, it's like the DNA code. It, it says, okay, this is supposed to unfold at this time. You know, this arm is supposed to shoot out and go over here at that time. Um, Cause it's, it's symbolic time. Um, well, whereas transits are also, in real time. And yeah. also it, it really only the inner planets by secondary progression are they they are the ones that move yes exactly the, the outer planets you know barely move yeah. at all they, they may That's change the direction second. which can be significant like station and turn up road or address yeah. yeah so you know but when they do you know a station or something that that's that is, yeah so, that's so there are things you can look at but with the outer planets uh in a secondary but overall they they're more more relevant in a in a sec in a solar arc progress yeah. all exactly. of the planets than you you're looking at so. yeah. yeah yeah and again the difference between what we just did today this is real time using transits whereas solar arcs and secondary progression are symbolic time. And yet they both work. With, well, again, they, they this, kind of give you different perspective yeah, on, exactly. on, on yeah. what is happening. Um, yeah, and yeah I mean, people generally start with transits, what's going on today. Yeah. Um, but it's always helpful, I think, to add in the progressions and, and see. Solar arcs. Yeah, and you then know, the ancients they had they had a whole other system of which I'm just walking down that rabbit hole with Abby McGar, <laughs> and you know there's solar perfections, there's uh, solar revolutions, and there's um, so all sorts of other bizarre things. So yeah, there's lots of ways to look at symbolic time and real time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, that's, that's what astrology is. It's the cycles of time. Yes, it is. It is. And that's why we even discovered it in the first place, is because things just keep changing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, folks. Well, um, we have come to the end of another podcast. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you next week. And please do remember the kids graduation parade on June the 26th. Um, and in the meantime, you have been listening to 90.1 FM, Powell Rivers Community Radio Station, CJMC. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye, Jill. Have a good week. Mine's going to be like a gong show. I guess oh. I was hoping it wasn't. But Mercury's still retrograde. Carry it on. is still retrograde. <laughs> okay, folks, we'll talk to you soon.